we're going to you know break down the seismic signal uh, s of t and we know that the components of the signal um, that we record this could be the field recorded signal it could be the processed uh, signal um, you know it just depends on which uh, stage of the processing flow that you're looking at but the signal is usually considered to be a convolution and this uh, Asterisk here is a simplified representation for the convolution operation, which is shown down here as an integral. But we have components in the convolution that consist of the wavelet convolved with the reflectivity sequence. And then we always have some noise, and this is usually considered to be random noise. Um, so this uh, seismic wavelet could be viber size, it could be dynamite, it could be uh, air gun. A mini soci, a shotgun, some kind of um, seismic source. The reflectivity, we would usually, you know, that reflects the um, the, uh, the difference in the impedances over the sum of the impedances, and the impedances are a function of the velocity and uh, density. So we have information about the rock properties. We have information about uh, therefore about lithology, fluid content, and uh, mechanical properties and so on. So this is usually, the, this is the integral representation of the convolution operation and uh, convolution, if we say something is convoluted, it's usually complex and difficult. Uh, and I, I suppose, I suppose um, the, the idea of convolution the mathematics is a bit um, is a bit difficult, but I think it's fairly straightforward. And uh, basically, what we see here is the the signal that we get is a superposition of the seismic source wavelet reflected from each of the reflection coefficients. And it, this wavelet is also scaled by the amplitude of the reflection coefficient. So if we look at it, you know, just kind of visualize the process and uh, take a look at this convolution operator, convolu convolution operation in the absence of noise. We have our seismic wavelet over here. We have a simplified reflectivity sequence. And basically the process of convolution, and we probably need to come back to this after we confuse you with, with um, you know, kind of working through some examples, but it's just a convolution hanging the wavelet, scaling the amplitude of the wavelet by the reflection coefficient each reflection coefficient. We get the wavelet, it's suspended from a given reflection coefficient, and its amplitude is scaled by the value of the reflection coefficient. So the duration of the wavelet, however, does not change. You know, if this is um, 30 milliseconds, then this is always 30 milliseconds, whether it's a small amplitude or whether it's a large amplitude. So. We're just scaling the wavelet that we input into the uh, into the Earth by the amplitude of the reflection coefficient, and then summing that all together in order to get this seismic trace. And very often we like to work backwards from the seismic trace to try and figure out what the reflectivity is, or perhaps the impedances, and uh, that. That gives us some sp more specific information about uh, velocity, uh, lithology, fluid content, and uh, so on. But this trace, which is what you're usually used to looking at, is just a superposition of all these wavelets that are scaled by the reflection coefficients and summed together to get the uh, seismic signal. Now, the, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the convolution process as a discrete process because you're working with seismic data, it's sampled data, and so this is really the operation that you're working with. And uh, in this relationship, T is a sample number, and we're just going to kind of assume that, well, you know, for the most part, think of it as just being equal to 1 until you get into some specific example. Uh, K is the discrete sample number which runs from 0 to n minus 1 and we're assuming that the signal then consists of a total of n samples um, in length. R of it is the reflection coefficient at 
time i t and w is the seismic wavelet. So it's this this w of i t is relative to time k t. W of minus i t is the image of w of i t. So it's kind of flipped. The wavelet this term in here is actually a flipped image of the uh, seismic wavelet w of i t. And it's shifted about the ordinate or the amplitude axis. So we're going to take a simple example and work through it. We've got uh, first just take a look at the uh, seismic wavelet. You've got the sample number down here. We've got the sample points here. We have the amplitudes shown by these sticks. So the amplitude at time zero, the, the very beginning, is one. And at sample one, the amplitude of the wavelet is two. At sample two, or the third sample in, the amplitude is minus one half. So uh, for negative time, we don't uh, we don't have any amplitudes, and for times greater than uh, two, the amplitudes are zero. And then we're just showing it uh, again, kind of schematically by itself. This is our simple. This is the simple wavelet that we're going to work with. We could have you know written it down as the numbers one, two minus one half at sample zero, one, and two. And then I've just kind of drawn a line through that. So you can see where this is the way you're used to looking at seismic data. We're kind of connecting the dots. So it looks like a nice um, minimum phase wavelet. This would be our W of IT. <clears throat> so what we're going to look at next is we're going to take the simple wavelet that we just talked about and we're going to convolve it with the simplest of reflectivity series which consists of a single reflection coefficient. So the reflectivity series is shown down here. Got a single reflection coefficient here at time zero or sample number zero and then for all the other samples out to whatever they're all equal to zero. So we only have one reflection coefficient and if we go back to that earlier um, display, we know that this wavelet, this process, should end up giving us this wavelet suspended from and scaled by the, the amplitude of uh, this reflection coefficient. We just should see the wavelet um, basically uh, repeated and, and it'll be, it'll have the same amplitude. So let's see how it works. So. This, first of all, we, we've got our wavelet and our reflectivity series, uh, k is equal to zero. So we're starting off with k is equal to zero in this, uh, in this sequence here. k is going to run for the total length of the trace, uh, zero to n minus one. And so k minus one, when k is equal to zero, w runs from zero into the negative range. Now, w is only defined for sample zero. So sample zero here has a value of one. And k minus i runs from zero to minus one to minus two to minus three. But all the negative values of k, or w rather, w minus one, w minus two, w minus three, they're all equal to zero. So we've got zero, minus one, minus two. We flip the wavelet. These samples are zero. Then we go through the multiplication process. We're multiplying times the uh, reflectivity sequence. So the reflectivity sequence is repeated down here. And so we have a one times a one plus zero times zero plus zero times zero and so on. So one, the reflectivity times one, the amplitude at k minus i equals zero. Zero, the reflectivity at sample one times wavelet at sample minus one. So we have zero times zero plus zero times zero plus zero times zero. We sum them all together, we get one. So the one pops out. Now we go to k equal one, 
And uh, k minus i then goes from 1 to 0 to minus 1 to minus 2. We know that w has defined amplitudes at 1 and 0. It would be these two terms here. So we're multiplying by the reflectivity sequence, and that's 1 times the value of the wavelet at sample 1 is equal to 2, and we have 0, the reflectivity at i equal 1, times the uh, wavelet at value 0, that would be its amplitude at, at the initiation, is 0, and uh, so on. So we get reflectivity of 1 times 2 plus 0 times 1 plus 0 times 0, 0 times 0 is equal to 2. So the second sample that pops out is 2. That's for k equal 1 in this uh, time series. And then we just keep moving on. So we'll do uh, k equal 2. W then runs from 2 to 0. So we get 2, 1. And it's running backwards. Remember, we're looking at this flipped version of the wavelet. That's basically what this equation is doing to our wavelet. So it's flipping it around. And uh, so we're going to be multiplying the reflection coefficient at uh, uh, time t equal 0 for the reflection coefficient because uh, i is running from 0 to n minus 1 each time. So we have 1 times k, which is 2 minus 0. So we're looking at the second sample. So we have 1 times m minus 1 half and um, 0 times 2 plus 0 times 1 plus 0 times 0. So we get this 1 times minus 1 half plus 0 times 2 plus 0 times 1 plus 0 times 0. We get our minus 1 half here. So we can see pretty much what we expected. We expected to see the wavelet suspended from this reflection coefficient. Since the reflection coefficient has a value of 1, the amplitude of the um, reflected wavelet is uh, identical to the input wavelet. It has values of 1, 2, and minus 1 half. Uh, if we go to k equal 3, uh, w runs from 3 to 0, 3 to 1, 0. But 3 times i equal r of i equals 0 is 0, and then we have zeros in our reflectivity sequence uh, after that. So all subsequent um, values of the output in this convolution process here are going to be equal to zero. So indeed we do get the wavelet, uh, a reflection of the wavelet going mathematically through this process. And uh, so I'll, effectively what I've tried to do here is just kind of work through the what the formula is doing. The formula is flipping the um, flipping the wavelet. We're, we're looking at its mirror image you might say. And then we're multiplying at times the reflectivity series as we go from uh, 0 to the... So 0, in this case, our simple reflectivity series at time t equals 0 had a value of 1, and then all the way out to n uh, values of 0. So our output, uh, we just have this one uh, reflected wavelet. If we had another reflection coefficient in here, we'd see this wavelet reflected again. It might be only one half, let's say. Then it would be we'd have out we'd have output values of one half, one, and minus one quarter. Uh, and then if there was a minus one in here, we could flip the wavelet upside down and so on. So hopefully this gives you a feeling of what what's happening inside this equation here in the in this uh, convolution process and um, so we've got this wavelet and we would be in a more complicated situation hanging this wavelet and from each of these reflection coefficients and scaling it by the amplitude of the reflection coefficient and then summing them together now you can see when we get reflection coefficients that are shorter or where the space between reflection coefficients is less than the duration of the wavelet, that we're going to get some superposition, and that's where the summation process comes in, and we get a, 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 
a superposition, superposition of the wavelet reflected from one reflection coefficient with that reflected from another. So for the next time, uh, take a look at this sample here, see if you can figure out what the output will be when you convolve this seismic wavelet with this reflectivity sequence. And uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.